So I'm Colin Guinness, I'm one of the consultant nephrologists at the Queen Elizabeth and uh, I'm just going to show you some snippets of my uh, day. So this week and for the next two weeks as well, I'm covering inpatients for the uh, what's called the Green Team in the Renal Service. Uh, so what that means is that um, each day I'll be responsible for the care of uh, a group of inpatients on the ward. Uh, my colleague handed over the patients he'd been looking after last week to me and I've just been looking at it uh, on my uh, email and uh, picking up uh, all the cases. I think we've got about 10 cases uh, to go and see and I'm going to go to the ward round after this. I'm going to answer some emails just now. Just been phoned from home to check that I fed the dog. It's life gone. It goes on outside the hospital. Um, and I've got changed into my blues, which I'll wear uh, all the time when I'm in the hospital. And I'll also be wearing a face mask uh, outside of my office uh, and on the wards at all times. Okay, so I'll give you some more information later on. We're in room now and we're just doing a handover in the morning of all the patients that have come in over the weekend and all the problems. And uh, they've been handed uh, over Elsa was on overnight, she's looking quite tired, but she's doing well, and she's handed over the problems. So we're now just about to start the ward round. This is the uh, ward sister and the nurse practitioner and the uh, junior doctor on the ward, Elliot. And, uh, so we're going to start the ward round and we, we start by talking about the, who are the sick patients. So it's now uh, 11 o'clock and I'm just writing the case notes of the first uh, several patients that I've seen. Uh, documenting the plan for uh, today and Elliot, the junior doctor, he'll uh, work with the nurse practitioners to make all the changes to the medicines and plan all the investigations and referrals to other departments that have arisen from the ward round so far this morning. So now the laboratory results from the patients I saw this morning on the ward, they should all be back uh, now, so I'm going to go through them to see if we need to make any changes and if we do I'll then telephone up to the ward to uh, let the junior doctor know what changes need to be made and um, I've also got to speak to uh, the wife of uh, one of the patients and the daughter of one of the patients um, to give them an update on their uh, relatives uh, clinical progress one of the things we spend a lot of time is uh, dealing with emails. We do a lot of email communication about admin and patients. And nearly every day there are updates from the management about various uh, aspects. And this is uh, included in a thing called Core Brief. And um, today's uh, information is about uh, the introduction of reusable respirators and some information about car parks. But it can be a whole variety of things. Uh, I'm just writing a supervisor's report for a PhD that I'm co-supervisor for, um, which is an interesting project on a, a disease called vasculitis. Uh, and I'm having to report on how we've had to adapt the research project because of the COVID pandemic. So it's now uh, evening and I'm at home. <coughs> and I'm now spending some time uh, doing some work. I'm reading some journal articles uh, about um, some new things. So tonight I'm reading about what drugs to select for treating high blood pressure and dialysis patients and also about some new studies of genetics and different types of kidney disease. So here's this um, article that I'm reading at the moment and this will hopefully provide some useful information because I get asked to um, adjust medication in people on dialysis to treat their blood pressure quite frequently. So I'm going to spend some time reading that. So one of the things we do is to try to keep up with developments in medicine, particularly in our own field. So this is a online a version of a, a very well-known journal called the New England Journal of Medicine. And I've got it set up so that it sends me summaries of articles that are of interest to my specialty and this is a picture that's been published of somebody who's got a kidney uh, 
in the wrong place. And uh, I can read about that. So there are much better ways of accessing information and trying to keep up nowadays, but there's a huge amount of um, stuff that's published that we need to try and keep up with. And it's difficult to find the time for that. So this morning I've been seeing uh, what we call outliers. So this morning I've been uh, on the wards uh, going to see patients that we call outliers. What this means is that it's patients who have got kidney disease and are referred to us by other specialties um, to ask for advice with the kidney problems. And at any one time in our unit, we might have uh, 50 of that sort of patient across different hospitals. So I've been going to the Queen Elizabeth wards today. I've been on to the vascular surgery ward, the stroke ward, uh, the uh, geriatrics ward and surgical ward. And uh, in fact, one of the patients uh, I've been discussing with the surgeon, we've decided it would be better to transfer them to our unit to manage the uh, kidney disease problems as that's becoming more of an issue for them. So I've arranged that transfer. And then I've also been up to the, the ward that I was on yesterday doing a ward round to see if there are any new problems in any new patients. And there was one new patient who's come in, a patient who's on dialysis, who's got the chest infection. So um, I've helped the junior make a management plan for them. And then this afternoon, uh, I'm about to have a meeting with our transplant coordinators uh, to discuss uh, a way of extracting information from our database on all the patients who are on the transplant waiting list so that we can send an email to the consultant looking after uh, the patients on the waiting list once a year to check that they're still fit and they've not developed any new health issues. So that's a sort of co computer programming and a, a logistic challenge to create a foolproof system uh, that will work and we're quite optimistic that we'll get somewhere with that. So I'm going to have a bite to eat now. So I've met with the transplant coordinators uh, this afternoon and we've managed to uh, tweak the query in the database so that it gives us a reliable uh, readout of who's on the transplant waiting list and whether or not they've been reviewed by their consultant within the last year to make sure they're still okay for the transplant waiting list. So that's good. Um, I've just had a phone call from the junior doctor in the ward to say that the patient we transferred today uh, has become less well and to uh, discuss the plan for treatment with me. And I'm going to go and see her later on. And then um, I'm just working just now on uh, another query of our database because we've noticed that we think a medicine that we use quite commonly in dialysis is causing a, a, a mild allergic reaction on the blood tests and it's not something that's been recorded before so I'm looking in the database all the patients who've been on that medicine and uh, their blood results um, to see if uh, we can confirm that that is uh, an association and if that is the case then we will we'll, um, uh, report that um, more widely. So it's now Wednesday morning and uh, I'm just going up to the ward to do the ward round. There's been a few emergency admissions overnight, so the consultant that's gone overnight has just texted me to say, can you phone me? So I give me a handover of uh, those new emergency patients. So that's me we just finished our ward round at one o'clock. It's been quite busy because there were quite a few new admissions. Um, they were quite complicated and one of our patients needed to get a biopsy of their kidney, that means a piece of their kidney taken out and we'll get the chance to look at it in the microscope later on, probably tomorrow. So I'm back in my office uh, now and doing some admin. That will involve signing letters uh, electronically uh, on patients that I've seen in clinics and patients who've been uh, discharged from the board under my care. Those are letters that go to the GP advising them of, of what's been happening. Um, and there's also various other uh, admin responsibilities. We've got a meeting tomorrow to discuss possibly changing the antibiotics that we give people who are having a kidney transplant at the time of their transplant. So I'm going to try and extract some data from our database to see uh, what uh, 
how many infections we're getting with the, with the current antibiotics we're using and that'll be used to determine whether we should make a change and if we do make a change we can compare uh, how we got on after we made the change with how we got on before the change to make sure it's been um, effective. What I'm about to do now is to uh, complete uh, what's called a work-based work -based assessment for one of our trainees. So there are different types of workplace assessments. We witness them seeing a case, for example, or uh, discussing a particular case, or we witness them doing a ward round, or witness them doing a procedure, and we give constructive feedback uh, to them directly, and also via this uh, system called ePortfolio, which is a record of um, their training. So I'm about to uh, complete uh, what's called a mini uh where I had a <clears throat> sat in on a consultation that one of our uh, trainees had done, and they did very well explaining to the patient uh, that they are likely to need uh, kidney replacement treatment in the future and discussing dialysis and transplantation with them so that the patient can make an informed uh, decision about that. Uh, so the things I'll be asked is about uh, their communication skills, their uh, professionalism, their clinical uh, diagnostic skills and various other aspects and then asked to give some constructive advice about what could be improved in the future. So I'll do that just now. So this morning's been um, a busy morning. Uh, again, I'm covering in patients. Um, I had intended coming in to catch up with some uh, administration, particularly in relation to uh, patients who'd been discharged uh, last week, making sure that the plans were in place for their follow-up. But I got a call from the uh, junior doctor on the ward to say that one of the patients had become very unwell uh, overnight and then particularly uh, the first <clears throat> hour this morning. So I went up to the ward and uh, unfortunately it was clear that uh, the lady was dying. This hadn't been entirely unexpected, although we hadn't anticipated at this particular time. We had warned the family about this possibility, but it was um, still quite distressing for them. So we're just about to start uh, our monthly uh, multidisciplinary team meeting for transplantation. This is where we discuss uh, some of the challenging cases in terms of making a decision about whether kidney transplant's the right thing for them, um, what the surgeons are going to do uh, in terms of the operation and how we're going to manage it afterwards to try to prevent the transplant from rejecting. We, we don't discuss all cases and this meeting just challenging ones and then after that we discuss some of the challenging cases of people who've been transplanted so we used to sit in a room and uh, discuss each case and make a record of what the decision was but now we do the meeting by zoom so um last night <clears throat> i had to go and see a lady over in the labor ward who's developed kidney failure after delivery of her baby um and I went back to see her earlier this morning and it looks as though things are improving, which is good. We thought she might need to be transferred to us to get some dialysis treatment. And I've been doing a ward round this morning, the rest of this morning. And now I'm about to uh, join a meeting with the Scottish government representatives and representatives from the other transplant unit in Scotland uh, about uh, contingency plans should there be another uh, surge in COVID. Uh, and uh, we're trying to work out what we could do to minimise the risk that patients who need a transplant won't get a transplant because one or the other centre is closed. And that meeting is going to be on Teams, uh, which we're now using a lot uh, to avoid uh, being in the same room and also avoid travelling. And then in the afternoon I've got a meeting with the PhD student that I'm co-supervising to work out how we're going to extract data uh, from the electronic patient record for his project. So uh, today's been quite a busy day. In the morning uh, I went to uh, Gartnaval Hospital where we're currently doing what we call our acute transplant clinic. So that's seeing people who are within the first year after transplant. And I saw eight or nine uh, patients there. Um, 
one of them had to be admitted because uh, their blood sugar was very high um, and one of whom has got some rejection of the transplant so need to, needed to be transferred down for some outpatient um, treatment for that. Um, the other ones were doing fine and getting the benefit of their transplant. We just made some minor adjustments to the medications once I saw their blood results uh, this evening. And then at lunchtime, came back down to the hospital to speak to the daughters of one of the patients um, who's really um, having a difficult time uh, in the ward, uh, just trying to um, think about what the options might be uh, for the future, including the possibility of um, uh, end of life care uh, as opposed to continuing with active uh, management. So that was quite a long conversation, but it was it was constructive and the um, daughters were uh, very understanding of the position. Um, so one of the things that's very important in medicine is teamwork and in the renal unit, uh, we're very keen on teamwork. So one of the things that was devised by some of our training okay, on Friday in the morning, one of them is allocated to bring in cake and we uh, take a break in the ward rounds for five minutes to have a coffee and some cake. And today's cake over, over here, as you can see, Minecraft, it's the same thing. Other donuts are available. <laughs>